When it comes to leather transmog, druids have become one of the more uncontested variations of the armor type. They typically will have some of the more favored looks and appeal, and despite them commonly being perceived as nature-loving hippies, druids still tend to make the most of their aesthetic and really highlight why they're one of the most played classes in WoW. While style and aesthetic are obviously subjective, we're going to be counting down some of the transmogs based around general want, popularity, and uniqueness in obtaining them. And at number 10, we have the Ice Crown Citadel set. This set was introduced to Druids in the Fall of the Lich King patch and was their personal tier set from the famous ICC raid itself. It had three colorations in total, one for 10-man normal, which was considered to be the base version of the tier set, and then two upgraded versions. To upgrade the items appropriate to your set, you would need to get a special token item called the Vanquisher's Mark of Sanctification. Once you obtain one of these marks, you actually need to return to the beginning of the instance and find the Druid tier set vendor. Here, you can turn this item and the subsequent tier pieces in for the next coloration of the line. So, the best way to do this is to actually just purchase the 10-man normal set for gold from the original vendor, and then run the raid on 10-man heroic to start obtaining the necessary mark items. You can also do this on 25-man normal, but depending on the difficulty you're set to, it will vary the other matching colorations of the set. So 25-man normal is actually just 10-man normal gear regardless. It isn't until heroic 10-man and then heroic 25-man where it begins to change for the player and start to provide a different look. But as stated, there are three variations of the set, meaning after you complete the first and second, you now have to get the last, which will require you to repeat the process of saving the previously acquired tier sets and then combining them with the Vanquisher's Mark at the tier set vendor. Only this time, it's much easier for the average person because on Heroic 25 Man is when Invincible's rain starts to drop. So now more people feel fine with running ICC on this mode because they know they are both getting a transmog and mount attempt in for the week at the same time, rather than using their lockout for the week on just transmogs and missed out mount attempts. This is because, despite there being technically four different difficulties of the raid, completing just one will lock you out the entire raid on all other modes. So you have to commit to just one for the week, really. With that all said and done, you can finally collect every variation of the tier set, which actually isn't difficult to do, if not time-consuming. ICC is a very, very old raid, so almost any character only a few levels higher than the instance level can get your attempts in, and a legion of druids or any other class can do this for you, if you're going for another class's tier set, that is. However, the largest reason this set is wanted is simply due to the fact that this set is one of the very few rare that is actually pretty edgy considering a druid's general theme. It actually lets people make their druids appear as a very niche sort of non-canon version of druids, this being the Druid of the Swarm. This has only actually appeared in Hearthstone card art, but has birthed a new look of druids and actually lets them portray themselves as plague-spreading insects of the Scourge. It's very unique from the original portrayal of druids, and while it's not actual lore in the game, it still has birthed a new genre for roleplayers to explore. It actually comes from the Knights of the Frozen Throne Hearthstone expansion specifically, so it's more like if druid was turned to a death knight, but still retained many of the druidic abilities in the process. You don't often see druids get a set that makes them much darker than any of the other classes, but when it does come around, it's a welcome change of pace. Though, the biggest reason this set is only at number 10 is because the age of this set definitely shows, despite the want for a plague druid kind of aesthetic. It is, after all, over a decade old, and most of the time druids are in their shapeshifting forms anyways, so they'd at least rather a bit more up set when they aren't. Plus, most of the time when people are running ICC, it's with Invincible in mind, so they aren't actually considering tier sets and don't want to bother going back to other modes, and instead end up just having the marks they acquire from another time or just vendoring them. We're going to freeze to death unless we call for help. How does your phone look? My phone has just enough power to sign up for HelloFresh. I saw they can help you get better at cooking by giving you step-by-step -step recipes along with the exact portions you need. So you can't possibly get things wrong, even if you're a beginner. Thank goodness you have internet. Quick call for help. Oh, no can do. I'm too busy thinking about more options to support my wellness journey than ever before. HelloFresh has over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes to choose from each week. So there is a lot to decide on. And everything arrives fresh and pre-portioned right at your doorstep. So there's more time for eating and less time spent shopping. I hear you even get free breakfast for life if you sign up now. We are going to freeze to death. We don't have time to look at subscription food services. Plans change and life gets busy. That's why HelloFresh lets you easily customize your deliveries from week to week. Mix and match lifestyle options to suit your needs like fit and wholesome, family friendly, quick and easy, vegetarian, and more. 
And everything can be tailored to your schedule by adjusting your delivery date and even skipping a week when you're not able to cook at home. As the seasons change, so do their seasonal menus, which highlight peak ingredients and flavors of every season, including pumpkin spice. Wait, really? How exactly does this whole thing work? Just sign up with me and we'll find out together. We're ghosts, we can't die anyway. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Go to HelloFresh.com, use my code HEROOG10, and receive 10 free meals plus free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box, all subscription is active if you're in the US. The link and code are valid in all countries, and the respective local discount will apply. And at number 9, we have the Scenarian Ryman, otherwise known as the Molten Core Set. This tier set comes from the very first Raid of WoW to ever exist. To get this set, you just have to run Molten Core, and that's it. Molten Core only has one difficulty setting back in Vanilla WoW, and was designed to be run with 40 people at a time. Though, like the last entry, the age of this set certainly shows, clocking in at nearly two decades old at this point. Though, the biggest reason this set is even here is because it is the bedrock of what makes Druid a Druid in the first place. It has certainly cemented what to expect from them, and is one of the most iconic tier sets to be added to the game. It is worn amongst many named Druid characters in WoW lore, and is even seen on Malfurion once as an alternative hero portrait. So, even Blizzard agrees the timelessness of this set is nothing to ignore. But that's unfortunately it for the set, and were it not for its iconicism, it probably wouldn't have made this list at all. But if a druid is ever struggling on a certain look, you could know for certain these appearances are a good basis to start at. And at number 8, we have the Bithic Blackrock Foundry set. During World of the Draenor, Blizzard had just begun their descent into the Mythic Raiding difficulty. This was intended to be the toughest content in the game, and even now, very few people actually engage with it on a full scale. To reward players for overcoming these challenges, the coloration of tier sets in the raid were given a sort of upgraded look in regards to the normal and heroic boats. For druids, this set makes you notably appear much more insectoid, and even has visual effects of bug wings moving and fluttering behind you at random times. You can almost compare to the ICC set from earlier, but just at a higher resolution in assets. This is especially seen in the shoulder pad region of the armor, as both sets have a sort of moving, perhaps living jaw that is attempting at eating things that come too close to it. For the reasons mentioned earlier in the 10th entry, this set really helps druid players get the look of a druid more focused on insects rather than larger animals like a bear. Now, this set is actually just themed around the look of the Evergrowth in Draenor, a hive mind of nature like beasts located in Gorgron. So, even if you aren't intentionally going for an insect type look, you appear to be a manifestation of the Evergrowth and spread the hive mind wherever you go. Role players all around swarmed to get this set when Warlords of Draenor retired into Legion so they could fully encompass the plague druid look they were going for with their characters. The best part is while you're farming this set, you are earning attempts for Blackhand's mount too. So unlike the Lich King, at least you don't have to farm it on various different difficulties for this transmog compared to others. Unless you obviously want to, but this insectoid transmog set definitely stands above many other transmog options for druids. And at number 7, we have the Mage Tower set. Added in patch 9.1.5 of Shadowlands, the Mage Tower is the recycled solo boss encounters originally given to players during Legion. During its original inception, players would be able to zone into the Mage Tower as any of their various specializations and fight a single boss that was designed specifically around the mechanics of their spec. It also was a pretty heavy gear check until Antorus the Burning Throne was released, as the original Mage Tower was made in Tomb of Sargeras, an entire raid tier before it was eventually retired for a time. These challenges at the time would reward a player with a now removed artifact weapon appearance that basically just dialed up its already existing shape and style to 11. In the case of druids, these were actually druid forms, and is where the infamous Werebear druid originates from. The Mage Tower now still has the same fights from back in the day, but now your skill to a certain item level and previous expansion's gear no longer works in the fight. For example, you cannot use the BFA Azerite system or older legendary items like Dragonwrath if you're a balanced druid. Though, regardless, if you complete the challenge now as any of the four druid specs, you are rewarded with the set of this entry, which is actually just a recolor of the Mythic 2 of Sargeras Transmogs. Funny enough, this set is also technically a recolor, or at least a remade one. Its predecessor comes from the Black Temple Raid, which also had the infamous Illidan Stormrage present as he progressed the raid. So Blizzard thought it'd be fitting to instead remake every set for each class where Illidan was first fought, at least for most of them. Some classes got a remake from their Stormwell Plateau tier sets instead, but that's besides the point. So long as you just overcome the Mage Tower as any Druid specialization, you'll be giving this entire set in full. However, what actually often happens is Druids will particularly seek out the Guardian Druid Mage Tower challenge before anything else. It may be easier to do it as balance for some, but completing the Cruel Encounter will yield an additional reward in the process. Doing so will give the Druid the famous Werebear reskin, 
marking it as one of the only original artifact weapon appearances to return. Kind of. It's a skin that didn't actually exist even at Legion for players, so it is still brand new, but druids that missed out on it are given the chance to obtain such a unique bear form once again. So oftentimes when people are running this scenario, it's for the bear form in mind, and not actually the transmox that comes alongside it. Because of this, it's only the number 7 or less, despite being a pretty good rendition of the various other Tomb of Sargera sets. So to anyone who actually wanted both the bear form and the transmog set, it's bonus points for them. And at number 6, we have the Nightmare Scythe of Alun. Added in Legion, every single specialization was given an artifact weapon that they would wield for the entire expansion. The more time that went on, the more powerful they'd become, while additionally revealing more lore about them. In terms of Bounds Druids, this was the Scythe of Alun, the original artifact used in Cataclysm to actually help calm the ferocity of the Gilneans who return into the Worgen. To obtain the various colorations from this entry, you just simply have to participate in any sort of PvP activity. As you do so, you will gradually increase your account-wide honor level. Honor level is simply meant as a prestige limit for veteran PvPers in WoW, and will reward various different items as you PvP. Because it's also account-wide, you may already have the appearances from this entry, even though you actually main a Warlock or something else. You unlock the base Nightmare version of the Scythe at level 10, then 30, 50, and 80 respectively. It won't actually show up on the honor level bar that you've unlocked them as you progress, but it will happen regardless. You'll know for sure that you have them all at honor level 80 because you'll also get an achievement called Fighting with Style War Torn indicating you collected all four PvP artifact appearances. Scythe and WoW are already pretty few in number, and are among some of the more favored type of weapon styles for a lot of players. Combo this with the inherent edginess of the Emerald Nightmare, and you have this version of the Scythe of the Loon. It's not often a druid is able to have a truly dark transmog, and it kind of makes sense when you consider the method of acquiring it, having to kill tons of other people for hours and hours on end. It's also a good addition for those who just really enjoy the aesthetic of the Emerald Nightmare in general, an infected variation of the Emerald Dream due to the influence of the Old Gods and their servant Xavius, the Nightmare Lord himself. So it's a bit interesting to see that the Nightmare can sometimes have a green or even blue variation for its looks, making it one of the more favorite items for Druids, especially since you no longer have to specifically be balanced to transmog it and only have a staff equipped. But speaking of the Emerald Nightmare, and at number 5, we have the Throne of Thunder set. This set comes with three different recolors, one for LFR, Normal, and Heroic. LFR was rather new at this point, as it was only just introduced in the Dragon Soul Raid at the end of Cataclysm. So LFR sets are usually just a less favorable recolor of Normal, but they aren't always bad. In terms of Vestiments of the Haunted Forest, all you need to do is run the Throne of Thunder raid on whichever difficulty you wish for the recoloration of your choosing. It being a pretty old raid at this point makes it especially easy to farm on alts, so there's no annoying grind necessary anymore and you can generally be done in a few weeks, if not a few days depending on how many alt druids you might have. Now, this set, like we've established earlier, is another one of the few rare sets that lets you wear truly darker and edgier armor than many of the other druids. It definitely draws inspiration from the Emerald Nightmare, and it especially shows on normal mode, using colors of a dark purple and red, while also appearing to twist a supposed wood on your body to life. There's even a spider living in one of the shoulder pads of the set, and its legs can sometimes be seen kicking around, looking for something to try to enter its nest for food. It certainly is a fan favorite for Druid players, coming from an especially good raid at the time of Mr. Pandaria. And even with no mount to actually be present in the raid, people still find themselves going back and farming the transmog. And at number 4, we have the Trading Post slash Mop Remix sets. In October 2023, Blizzard would add a sort of mini set to the Trading Post that players could purchase with the Trader's Tenders currency. This currency is obtained every month at a limited amount for simply completing various amounts of activities in WoW ranging from something as simple as pet battles to slain heroic raid bosses. Every month, the trading post will rotate new items in for players to spend their trader's tender, marking the previous set as obsolete, at least for a time. These mini sets come with a helmet, shoulder pads, and belt, making the player to create a matching set with the rest of the items as they see fit. It also had a weapon ensemble you could purchase in October, but this was separate from the armor. It came with a fist weapon, a dagger, and two stabs. So, once November 2023 rolled around, these items were potentially permanently rotated out, and they've not seen an appearance since then. They can potentially come back, but none of the other classes that received a mini set have returned since then, so who knows what Blizzard intends of them in the distant future. It's just unfortunate because the only people who really got these items were diehard druid fans. This is because the tender currency is very scarce, and once you make a purchase you're confident in, you cannot earn more of the currency until the next month 
when all the other items are now gone and replaced with something else. Fortunately, the Santa did semi-return in the form of Mop Remix Event, which was essentially just replaying the Mist of Pandaria again, only now you're extremely overpowered. Participating in this event would earn you bronze, and this currency could be used to purchase a recolor of the original trading post variations of the set. The only unfortunate thing is, once Mop Remix ends, this set too will be removed for potentially forever. Meaning those who missed it just have to live with the fact that they can't get it anymore. Because of the intense scarcity surrounding these sets, the players have scrambled on their best efforts to obtain them while they can, or are simply in hopes Blizzard will eventually re-add them in the future months of trading posts. They honestly could never return or come back in the next week of seeing this video. So who really knows? And at number 3, we have the original Tier 3 slash Dreamwalker set. This set was originally from the Naxxramas Raid of Vanilla WoW, but was removed once Wrath of the Lich King came around revamping the Naxx Raid and replacing the existing armor with newer recolors. It wasn't until Dragonfly these sets were made obtainable again outside of the Black Market Auction House, costing players hundreds of thousands of gold in the process. To then start your grind for the long-removed Tier Set 3, you must unlock the original Nax Ramus. To do this, you must first unlock the old Skullamance dungeon and run Skullamance a bunch of times in order to properly follow the steps. Doing so will eventually grant you access to the version of Nax Ramus that existed in vanilla, with all of its previous transmogs and more. To obtain the Dreamwalker set, you will speak to an NPC named Zacket Skullmash, allowing you to exchange Scorch Stones for Death Bargaining Chips. Now with these bargaining chips, you can purchase Dented Raider's gear, which when used has a chance to be a Lamented Crusader's armor. This is required to craft the old Tier 3 sets. To actually craft them, you're going to need a lot of gold, RNG, and someone who already has a fully finished tier 3 set, either from vanilla or from the newer method. Once you have the armor, you can purify it using Phylactor Weave and Righteous Orbs. Phylactor Weave comes from the Dented Raider armor pieces and can be bought for 2,000 gold each. A complete set of tier 3 will require you to have 1,400 Phylactor Weave or 2.8 million gold and 80 Righteous Orbs. Essentially, you're going to be killing Naxxramas, Skolomance, and Stratholme bosses a bunch while simultaneously dropping a ton of gold for your Tier 3. We recommend looking up a more in-depth guide on how to properly unlock the original Naxxramas, or go watch the Top 10 Hardest to Obtain Transmogs video that details it further on this channel. For second to last place, we have Aberus, the Shadow Council set at number 2. Otherwise known as the Strands of the Autumn Blaze, this set was added in WoW during Patch 10.1 of Dragonflight the second raid tier of the expansion. It had up to six colorations, if you include the PvP variations, but now the elite tier has been removed and cannot be obtained. Regardless of this, you have the other five to still look forward to whenever you want to farm them. All you need to do is enter the raid on the respective mode you desire and kill the bosses within, hoping to net you the specific armor piece you need to complete your set. Although at this point, Blizzard had introduced a new system called the Creation Catalyst. This catalyst allows players to convert any piece of armor from a raid it was built for into the corresponding tier set variant of the class. The only restriction was the armor type and the weekly increasing charges. Basically, if you needed the shoulders for the set, but you looted a different leather shoulder from a boss, you can then turn it into Mantle of the Autumn Blaze in turn, netting you actually two different transmogs in the process. The only limitation to this is the increasing charge limit the Catalyst has. What this means is that every week you gain one charge of the Catalyst, so only one item per week can usually be converted if you're converting one every single week. The fortunate part is this charge only applies to gear that is current to the season of the raid. So if you go back into Aberus during the War Within, or rather when Season 3 or 4 of Dragonflight was active, there is no longer a limit to the charges of the Catalyst. Depending on the item level of your gear also varies on the coloration of the armor you will turn into, often having to match the same threshold. So if you have an LFR shoulder pad, it will only turn into an LFR variant, not something like Heroic or Mythic, unless the item level is increased from the same raid depending on the difficulty. The biggest reason this set is wanted, however, is the fact that it takes general druid looks and just dials them up to 12, making it especially loved by the community. Plus, it actually leans much more into 3D assets and movement physics, primarily seen in the shoulder pad area with the wings. It's a far cry from the usual 2D tube robe looks a person will get with each tier, and it's just a very welcome change of pace. It's actually pretty often players will use this set in combination with other druid items, primarily the Aberus legs as they provide the cool cloak-like appearance while still having your legs actually visible instead of just covering them like a cylinder. Blizzard has given nothing short of praise for this set, and people have asked many times for more sets like it, leaning into the 3D sort of area and more visual effects to enhance their look. So it's at number 2. And finalizing this list at number 1, we have the Mythic Nighthold set. 
Probably one of the most infamous sets for Druids in the past years, the Nighthold set is certainly among the favorites. It lives and breathes every fashionita of the Druid theme, and more importantly, fits every race that can be a Druid in the first place. Oftentimes, people will struggle to convey a certain look for a Druid depending on the race, as the culture of a Zandalari Druid can differ from a Night Elf. With this set, you can pretty easily resolve this issue and wear it with the utmost pride. To obtain it, you just need to farm the Nighthold Raid on Mythic difficulty and hope the bosses drop the items. You can also run the Emerald Nightmare on the same mode, but there is less drops in the raid overall compared to the Nighthold, so it has seen a lesser source of the armor. You also are passively farming both of the famous Infernal Mounts from the final boss, Gul'dan, in the process. So even if you're a huge fan of the set, you have even further incentive to go for it because of the very rare mounts in Gul'dan's arsenal. You may have noticed that the set actually looks very much like the Trading Pulse variations from earlier. Although the set from the Nighthold came first and was so popular for many years after its release, the Trading Post and Mop Remix mini sets are like a semi-remake of the Nighthold set itself, taking on somewhat different colorations and shapes, much more tiger-based instead of an owl in the process. So it was such a favorite set that Blizzard basically just gave it to players a second time. Kind of which is pretty high praise considering Legion was over eight years ago now. All right, and that's the video. If there's any other Druid transmogs you think we may have missed or have any ideas for future videos just like this one, please let us know down in the comments below.